Well, what's the best way to hit your driver straight and far? Well, if you're looking for a quick swing tip, then this isn't the video for you. What you're gonna to learn today is the true fundamentals of hitting your driver straighter and further and understanding much more about why the ball goes offline. We've all put that great swing on the shot only to look up to see the ball fading or drawing or worse off of the fairway. And stick around because we're going to talk a little bit about gear effect that no one ever speaks about. Welcome to Aussie Golf Pros, where we help you make the most of your game. So you can see I've put some powder, it's just some dry shampoo that I've sprayed onto the driver face to give us some feedback on where the strike is. So heel contact is going to put spin on the golf ball, but possibly not the spin you're expecting. That put fade spin on as we saw, it curved off to the right hand side. That wasn't because I had the face open, that was because I struck it out the heel, which put that spin on the golf ball. So what happens as the driver hits the ball on the heel, the driver twists and that imparts left to right spin for a right hander, so fade spin onto the golf ball. Don't take my word for it, there's lots of information out there, lots of high speed photography out there that's working that out, that's exactly what's happening. And obviously the, the launch monitors, track man and flight scope and so on, are proving that that's the case. And that's what gear effect is. If you hit it out the heel, it's gonna put fade spin on it. And we'll try and hit one out the toe now. So a little bit out the toe, it's putting some draw on it. So you can see it's only slightly out the toe, but that means that that contact twists the club face open, the ball starts slightly right for the right-hander and then draws to the left. Again, my club face was pretty square then. I felt that, I felt the toe contact, but I could see that the ball drew because of the spin imparted on the toe contact. And the way that gear effect works is that the further out the toe you contact the driver, then the more twist is imparted and the more spin is imparted on the golf ball. And the further out the heel it is, then the more fade. Gear effect works vertically as well. So if you miss hit it low or high on the club face, then the club is actually going to twist, which also imparts spin or a change of spin onto the golf ball. So if you catch a ball low on the face, then that means the face is gonna twist down. The ball will come out a little lower than normal, but with higher spin, so more backspin. That's a recipe for losing distance. If you catch it too high up the club face, then the ball goes very high with a lot less spin. And that's a better equation. So actually the ideal point to catch your driver is just above the center. That gives you a little bit higher launch than normal and a little bit less backspin. And that equals longer drives. So be mindful of what the tee does. If the tee stays in the ground like that, then you've hit it too low on the club face. That low ball flight, high spin, doesn't go very far. What they're not telling you is what happens when you catch an edge. So it's pretty obvious that if you catch an edge there right off the end of the toe, it's gonna to shoot over to that side and right over the heel contact here and it's gonna shoot off to the left for a right-hander. We've all hit those shots, no matter how good you are, we've all hit them. But what happens if you catch a top edge or a bottom edge? That's the bit that no one talks about. That's the bit that's missing and you need to understand what's going to happen to the golf ball if you catch a top or bottom edge. Let's hit one and try and find out. There it is, I did it. <laughs> what an ugly shot. <laughs> Who have you known on YouTube that purposely skied their driver? My poor ZX5 driver. What sort of driver are you using? This is, I love this. It's a Strixon ZX5. It's really, really powerful and it does what I expected to do. And what it did then was it hooked out of the heel. So see that contact point there? So I've skied it, I've caught the edge, I've caught the heel. But according to all of the pundits out there and all of the other YouTubers, if you hit it out the heel, it's supposed to slice. And if you hit it out the toe, it's supposed to hook. Clearly that's done exactly the opposite. That hooked miles in the air. And through my experience as a coach, I've seen that shot many, many times. The sky hook, it goes miles to the left for a right-hander and miles to the right for a left-hander. And that's the bit that's missing. And you need to understand how the contact with the driver affects the golf ball. Because if you don't, then you're guessing. You're guessing on what your club face is doing. So obviously we wanna to try to find the sweet spot much more often, but if we do miss the sweet spot, which we all do, we need to know what effect that is gonna have on the golf ball. Clearly it was just the strike that caused it to hook so wildly. So keep up here, this is where the crazy detail comes in. This is what happens if you hit it out of the toe. 
So it's going to go for right hander, right, left, right. And heel, left, right, left. And that's what happens when you catch an edge. The normal gear effect rules don't apply. They're going to change. Catching an edge is always going to change that normal science of gear effect. Well, it is still obeying the laws of physics. We just need to learn them a little bit better. A couple of years ago, our friend and colleague Adam Young posted a great video explaining how gear effect works and how any strike away from the sweet spot can impart spin on the golf ball. And this is the diagram he used, and you can see here that towards the heel, you can expect more fade, but less hook, and towards the toe of the club, more draw and less slice. But let's expand on that a little bit because it is very easy to catch an edge. And as you can see with this driver diagram, those edges are rounded, and so that's gonna have an effect on the spin rate. And also the golf ball compresses, so it's very easy to catch one of these edges. So if we catch the driver in the center, then obviously the ball's gonna go where the club face is pointing. And if the club face is square, we're not gonna expect any side spin, the ball's gonna go straight at a normal trajectory. If we strike the driver higher, but still in the middle, then there's still not gonna be any side spin, just a higher shot and lower down, we have a lower trajectory, but there's still no side spin. If you hit it towards the heel, then that puts the slice spin on the shot, and if you hit it towards the toe, then that puts the hook spin. Now let's include the edges. If you strike it high and out the heel, then that promotes hook spin, low out the heel, lower shot, but still hook spin, high out the toe, and that's actually slice spin, low out the toe is also slice spin, just a different trajectory. So these gear effect rules, they do apply to fairway woods, hybrids, and irons as well. This is a seven iron and I guarantee you, if you hit it out the toe with a seven iron, it's gonna draw a little bit more than it usually would. And if you hit it out the heel, it's gonna fade a little bit more. And again, the rules apply. If you strike a rounded edge, then that's going to reverse it. So a toe bottom is gonna fade a bit, but a heel bottom won't hook because it's a flat edge, not rounded. I've chosen a driver for this video because we have more of an effect. It has less loft and it's a bigger head. So the bigger the head and the less loft there is, the more change that gear effect is going to make to the flight of the golf ball. So the moral of the story is always strive to improve your ball striking, striving for that sweet spot more and more. It's an often neglected part of golf coaching and golf development. So don't ignore it. And the other thing is that we need to be aware of the difference in flight that we can expect from different parts of the club face. And that's a little complicated, yes, but it is a part of golf improvement because we want you to be aware of what adjustments that you need to make, whether it be the club face angle or the swing path or the ball striking, rather than it just being guesswork. Isn't it amazing how much that driver twists for those miss hit shots? And what's also amazing is how much difference there is in the distance gained when you hit it out the sweet spot. You're seeing something like 60 to 70 yards difference on some shots. And that alone is substantial enough reason for us to strive for that sweet spot, as well as being able to hit the driver a lot straighter. So you've taken that first step by being more aware of the ball striking and gear effect and what it does to the golf ball. Now the next step is to use some drills and we've got a couple of videos here containing those drills that are really gonna help you to hit that sweet spot more often. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, are you the best golfer you can be?